everybody to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Uh, it is an honor and a privilege to have Jacob Wall. Please tell me I pronounced it correctly today. <laughs> you did. You did. You got it, David. Sometimes I get lucky. Sometimes I don't. All right. And uh, he is a young hedge fund manager. And, uh, you know, I'm 45 and I wish I had the head start that uh, Mr. Wall has. And I wish I had the knowledge uh, that he has about the markets and about uh, hedge fund investing and what that whole world is like because I'm more on the retail side of things and so uh, Mr. Wall first of all thank you so much and welcome to uh, to my audio program today hey no problem great great to be here I appreciate it um, yeah it's a slow day in the markets uh, it's, it's just been super slow but 2017 is still young uh, with a new administration in the White House, um, has your trading or investing, uh, is it going to change for the new year? Well, I think what we're seeing, and just to preface it, I, I trade strictly uh, fixed income and interest rates here at Montgomery Assets. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I look at all markets and, and sort of develop my view. But I think that what we're seeing is that monetary policy can only do so much. Um, you know, you know, the Fed is kind of at the end of the rope in terms of what they can do to uh, stimulate economic growth. Uh, you know, we've seen the same thing, the same story kind of play out in Europe and Japan. Right. Um, and I, I think one of the most interesting questions out there is that, you know, all we ever hear about in the Fed minutes is 2% inflation, 2% inflation. Uh, you know, it's, it's the goal. It is the... Uh, elephant in the room for the Federal Reserve. Right. Uh, but one thing a lot of people don't ask is, what's the big deal with 2% inflation? Why do you want 2% inflation? Because uh, if we look at Japan, uh, they've had 2% inflation or thereabouts for about 10 years. And it hasn't produced uh, the kind of economic growth that uh, a lot of people would like. Right. Um, so I think that, that what we've seen is that monetary policy can only do so much. Inflation uh, in itself can only do so much to simulate an economy and there's a lot more uh, that goes into it there's there's demographic issues uh, there's issues of fiscal stimulus that come into play and so now what we're seeing is that the driver of market movement and I think we're going to continue to see this is going to be uh, fiscal policy related it's going to have to do less with the Fed uh, more with Congress more with the White House uh, and trade policy tariffs uh, Etc., and less so to do with the Fed. Not at all discounting that what the Fed does is still significant, what they do is important, uh, but I think that its significance and the way the markets move is going to start to decrease over the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah. Okay. Wow, very good, very good. Um, so it, it does, but it does not sound like you're making any major changes to what you're doing at Montgomery. No, no. What, what we do um, is, not, is not going to change. Um, you, you know, basically, we just have to be right. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, my partner trades equities and equity indexes. I trade fixed income and interest rates, uh, both in the U.S. and I also trade uh, European rates, German boons, bobbled shots, Euribor, um, and I also look at, at you know Japanese government bonds occasionally. Um, so, you know, what we do uh, principally doesn't change. Um, however, how we position ourselves uh, might. And more and more, I am coming to the view that uh, inflation is running a little bit hotter than expected. Uh, we're seeing that in Germany. Prices uh, across the board for products uh, are, are rising at a quicker rate than economists have expected. Sure. And as a result, I think that equities are going to uh, be more of an appealing asset class to investors. and you know, treasuries, high quality corporate debt, those types of assets are going to be uh, less favorable, uh, let's say, over the next six to nine months. Okay, gotcha. Very good, sir. Um, so I'd like to hear a little bit of your story, if you don't mind. It's, it's a fascinating story. How did you get into this business at such uh, a young age? Sure. So I, you know, I started trading when I was uh, like eight years old, uh, just just trading stocks. Uh, had an ING account uh, that I traded. Uh, that was my mom's account. Uh, messed around in in various 
um, stock trading strategies and and you know I, I did it all I went the slow path uh, for a while I was into charts and uh, you know indicators and everything else and then I was you know a balance sheet investor and you know I went through the full progression and eventually kind of figured out uh, where it's at trading wise um, and, and then when I was 16 I was in high school uh, trading uh, and my friends asked if they could invest and so basically I rounded up uh, you know some lunch money more or less right. uh, from my friends and we did pretty well and then you know their parents wanted to invest and the teachers and the principal uh, and next thing you know it became a little bit of a story uh, and I got on the news and uh, that fund uh, kind of exploded from there, Wool Capital Investment Group. Right. Uh, and I managed that fund for about a year uh, before meeting my business partner and uh, starting up our new fund, which we which we currently run. Right. Okay. And that's Montgomery, correct? Yeah, that's Montgomery Assets. And I do have to say, um, for anybody listening, I'm not soliciting your business formally. I'm just talking about the company for informational purposes. I just have to say that for. Uh, right. compliance reasons understood but hey maybe if I want to promote it a little bit you know that's not you that's me and uh, yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely and I would definitely recommend it uh, Montgomery assets I mean you're talking to right right now I'm talking to one of the uh, current and future superstars of, of the business and um, you know I, I can't imagine too many more places where I would feel very safe um, you know parking my money and and watching it grow uh, would you say Montgomery Assets uh, has a more conservative attitude toward um, toward risk management? Definitely, and and you know I feel comfortable saying that because I have traded aggressively before, extremely right. aggressively. Um, you know, at Will Capital on August twenty fourth in, in that week uh, when the market was down, there was a lot of volatility. Uh, that week, uh, our fund went from. A little over flat, uh, plus or minus three or four percent, to up seventy percent in wow. a single week. Uh, so, huh. you know that's a yeah. that's a huge return, uh, but it also comes with a lot of risk. I mean, sure. that was very aggressive trading. That kind of trading, you're talking about potentially large drawdowns. Um, and so, I know what aggressive trading is, and I know what conservative trading is. And what we do at Montgomery is. Uh, definitely a lot less aggressive than than that sort of trading. Um, you know what we generally look for is about one percent per month. Um, yeah, we want to be very consistent, and we don't want to have large drawdowns. Right. Um, I think that large drawdowns for somebody who really is not experienced at aggressive trading. I mean, really aggressive trading are, are just a just a bad thing. And, and obviously they're a bad thing for somebody who knows aggressive trading as well. But for your average person, you know, a large drawdown is, is going to be hugely detrimental to, you know, th their results sure. uh, long term. Absolutely. Um, very good. Uh, by the way, uh, we're at the midpoint and I just wanted to uh, let everybody know uh, your contact information. If somebody wanted to contact you or Montgomery um, just to ask questions or get further information, how would they do that? Sure, they can go to MontgomeryAssets.com. Uh, all the information is right on my site. Okay. Uh, they can call, they can email. Email is usually best. Uh, they can also look at my Twitter, which is at Jacob A. Wool. Uh, you know, my, my Twitter is a great place to go, sort of, to see what I'm thinking day to day. Yep. And I put a lot of stuff on Twitter. I put, you know, market commentary and, and also just goofy kind of political commentary and other stuff as well. Right. <laughs> I, I would say that. Uh... Jacob's Twitter is a must follow if you haven't fo if you have not followed it already, um, and and head on over to Montgomery's website. Why not um, see what they can do for you? Possibly, I'm going to put all of that in in the description, all the links in the description of this video. So, just to make it real easy to contact uh, Jacob and Montgomery Assets. Um, so, there's a statistic floating around that I like to quote, which is that 90% of traders fail at it. Um, why do you think that is, and is it fixable? Well, I, you know, first of all, I think it's much higher than ninety percent. Um, I think ninety percent of traders lose money, but I think that much a much higher percent fail uh, because if if you think about it, um, let's say you're totally flat, um, that you would you would then not, or let's say you're completely flat or you're up one percent 
on a hundred thousand dollar account let's say actually a, a pretty large size account for most retail traders right um, in that case you would fall into the success category under that statistic however you know let's add up the hours that you spent trading opening an account learning what you're doing uh, the stress the late nights the yep. early mornings yeah and you're up you're up a thousand dollars you know just about everybody for that amount of effort and toil and intellectual output uh, should be generating more than a thousand dollars right uh, so I, I think even somebody who's up one percent after spending a large amount of time we can perhaps go ahead and put that down in the failure category yeah so when we talk about people that are actually succeeding in the market generating a competitive return not losing sleep you know uh, having a, a decent lifestyle I think it's maybe around 1% of, of traders right uh, and and that statistic is is simply because you have a lot of people that come into the market and I don't know that it's if maybe they don't take it seriously enough um, or, or they just don't know how seriously they need to take it yeah. but you know trading is a very serious thing uh, there there is no bunny slope for trading I like to compare it to skiing <laughs> right there's only there's only one level and it's like getting pushed out of a helicopter onto you know Mount Kilimanjaro and trying to ski to the bottom during an avalanche yeah wow <laughs> you know you only have you only have one level and it is the major leagues uh, so if you're gonna if you're gonna come into trading and have kind of a nonchalant attitude about it you're probably going to lose it doesn't mean you won't get lucky and, and win uh, and, and then build up a false positive concept that it's because of skill. But, right. you know, you talk about trading, you're waking up in the morning, um, but so are, you know, a thousand people in Hong Kong that work for Goldman Sachs that have PhDs. Yeah. Uh, they get paid a million dollars a year to trade. Right. And, you know, these people really know what they're doing, and you're playing against them. Uh, so, you know, the idea that you're just going to read a couple of books, uh, and you're going to be successful is one that I think is is misplaced. Right. Uh, trading takes takes years to develop. It takes a lot of hours, a lot of time, and you know, frankly, losses. You you do have to have bad trades. I think that you must lose money. Right. Uh, real money, not simulated money. Yep. And I think that you know, really, that's the only way to develop yourself as a trader. Absolutely. Um, and for many people, it is better just to, um, you know, trust, put their trust in an asset manager such as yourself and such as your organization, Montgomery, because you have the experience, you have the knowledge, you have a team of people dedicated to doing this, um, as opposed to trying to go it on your own, which, uh, you know, most people don't have the resources, they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the background that you do. So, right, or, yeah. or just, or just maybe it's just not worth it for them. Right, um, you know, uh, my dad is a, is a lawyer. He's a very talented lawyer. He's very good at, at practicing law. It's not worth it for him to take an hour that he could be practicing law, um, and and use that hour to be trading stocks or options or fixed income or anything else. Yeah, it's right. simply it, as an economic function not worth it. Absolutely. And many people are in the same boat. Right. Uh, you know, so so trading and investing is is something you have to do more or less. Um, you can park your money in cash. Um, you can park your money in real estate or gold or, or whatever you want to do. Um, but you know, over time, you 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 put your money in asset classes because the assumption is that asset classes perform better than cash. Right. At, at a at a basic bare bones level. Sure. Um, you know whether you have somebody like us to manage those assets and you know attempt to outperform or you just dump your money into a REIT you know a real estate investment trust right that's up yep. to you sure uh, but you know I think that the idea that most people are going to launch you know a platform and get into trading is one that's very tough and, and I know that this is a kind of a sobering message because you turn on CNBC you turn on Fox Business, and it's one you know think or swim commercial or right. stock trade commercial <laughs> after the next, saying anybody can do it, 
all you need is our is our charts and our platform and you can do it um, but it's it's just like a casino commercial right yeah. I mean they make money when you trade right these people's business is not trading they have their commercials where they're trading uh, but but these people make business you know they make their business nine dollars and ninety nine cents at a time yep. or yep. five dollars and ninety nine cents at a time right that is how they make money uh, and it's important to understand that and understand you know just ask yourself is somebody on the buy side or the sell side hmm. and if they're on the sell side but they're not being um, you know completely upfront about that then you really need to look at perhaps not taking their advice yeah 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 you have to look at their you know what do they have to gain from it and uh, yeah that, that's a great point I'm speaking with Jacob Wall uh, superstar young superstar uh, hedge fund uh, manager and um, yeah, a couple more questions if I may um, for example uh, the hedge fund managing life uh, is it as exciting as some people might think it is from movies or or whatever they have in, going on in, in, in their imaginations what what is what is it like what's the daily grind like right I mean basically we just wake up we trade for 30 minutes and then we hop on a yacht or go golfing and that's it um, <laughs> or at least that's what people would lead you to believe right um, but in reality it's much different um, you know, I would compare at least sort of the way we run our hedge fund, and and you know I can't speak for a lot of funds, uh, and and I think maybe their performance reflects this, but I'll leave that up to you. Um, you know, we are trading constantly, uh, or or you know at least you know in the act of analysis, trading, managing risk, virtually all day long. Um, you know, my partner will be up from, you know. 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. trading the equity market, and I'm up at 3 a.m. trading, you know, German boons versus baubles. Um, yeah, it, you know, it's it's a very intense kind of kind of lifestyle. Um, you know, you have to love what you're doing and and just be totally committed to it. Right. And you know, for us, it, it doesn't feel like 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 it sounds. It doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like um, you know, like we're taking an SAT or something, even right. though intellectually it's very similar. Sure, sure. Uh, so, you know, we're up all day, we're, we're trading constantly, we're working constantly. Um, and then, you know, there are times where you have downtime too. Um, like on Saturdays, I don't spend like any time looking at the markets. Right. Um, because I, I do think that it's important to be able to switch off too. Uh, because what it, I mean, what if you lose a hundred thousand dollars in a day? Um, yeah, you, you know that you cannot let that allow you to lose sleep because right. at the end of the day you still have to sleep and then wake up and, and go back to the screen. Yeah. So, um, you know that kind of I guess paints a picture of of what we do. And if people are interested, I actually did a, a recent feature with Vice News, um, and that's up on YouTube, and people can find that. Okay. And they kind of came over to, you know, our, our office and saw exactly what we do. Um, so that, that can, I guess, kind of paint a better picture for people of what it's like day to day. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check out that video. So it's, uh, so it's, you mean it's not Lamborghinis and Learjets all the time? Wow, I'm shocked. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I, what I kind of pose, pose this question for people um, you know, if if some schmuck in a Lamborghini uh, can make a thousand percent a year, okay, right? Because he's got he's got a Lamborghini, okay. He makes a thousand percent a year. He's making, you know, he's turning X into Y, and the numbers sound incredible. Um, I would just ask people this: if that is the case, okay, then why is Howard Marks getting paid a hundred million dollars a year to make eight percent? Right. You know. Why, right. why are these hedge fund managers getting paid 30, 40, 50, 100 million dollars a year, 800 million dollars a year to make 30 yeah. percent? I mean, if you're making 30 percent, you're on the hedge fund all star list and you're getting a bonus. Right. Um, so so it, what I what I ask is if it's so easy, um, why are these people getting paid so much and making so much less return um, when yeah. when, you know, 
these banks and and pension funds could just bring in um, a penny stock genius or right. you know a forex specialist <laughs> guru. Uh, right. You know, obviously there's something wrong there. Yeah. So so what I would urge people to do is, you know, um, if somebody's telling you they're a, a master trader. Um, it, it doesn't mean they need to post an audited track record every day online. There's no reason to do that. But if you're interested in engaging in a financial relationship with that person, um, ask them for a track record. Yep. Look at real trading, um, or just don't even waste your time. Alternatively, right? right. You know, don't even waste your time uh, because because it's clear that you know a, a car. And I don't know why it's always cars. It's cars and watches, but but a car and a watch. <laughs> Has nothing to do with how good of a trader someone is. That's right. Um, you know, it's just, it's just it's kind of ridiculous what you see on social media yep. and stuff like that. Very true. Cars and watches, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then one yep. final one final uh, question, if I may. Um, it is still early in 2017. Uh, what asset classes do you think have? Uh, I, I hate to say massive grow, growth potential because I don't want to sound like one of those Lamborghini guys, but uh, you know what. What are you bullish on right now? Starting in mid 2016, um, I started to see a turnaround story in a lot of distressed debt um, across energy. Number one, obviously, because frankly, there's a lot of distressed energy debt. A lot of it's mm -hmm. bad news and it's going to go to zero, but a lot of it might be okay. Energy, um, raw materials, production, kind of hard assets, not tech and, and communications and telecom. And, right. You know, I, I started to see kind of this shift to um, hard assets, companies that actually do things. Um, and that's played out very well for us. And I think it's going to continue to play out. And the other thing, um, and I'm going to give people the stock secret of all time here. Um, this is like the only individual equity that I feel, you know, any conviction about, and this isn't financial advice, right? But I like tobacco. I love tobacco, tobacco stocks. Okay. I love tobacco stocks. I mean, here's the story with tobacco stocks: they sell an addictive product. The end. Yep. Um, <laughs> Very and, true. And you see that play out in the tape. Many days the S and P will be down. They'll be up. Yeah. They'll be stressed in the market. Their stocks will be flat to up. And I'm not saying that, you know, the S&P can be down 1% or, or be down 10% and these stocks are going to be up 10%. Okay, right. there's something right. called beta. That's not going to happen. Yeah. However, the fact that these stocks sell an, ex an, an addictive product gives them a very robust business. And, and we're not people that just buy stock. We're using option strategies, sure. uh, derivative strategies. But as a business, they have a very robust business. They sell an addictive product. When things get bad around the world, people don't smoke less, they smoke more. Hmm. That doesn't speak to their stock price necessarily, but it does speak to their business. Yeah, yeah. You heard it here, for, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, tobacco, tobacco stocks, interesting. Yeah, okay. You know, how about Starbucks? They're pretty uh, addictive. <laughs> I've been following Yeah, I, I don't know about Starbucks. <laughs> uh, interesting story playing out in, in you know, the soft commodities, coffee, yeah. cocoa, and, and right, stuff like right. that, but I haven't done a whole lot of work on Starbucks. <laughs> That's one I've been watching for a while. Well, I've been speaking with, uh, I've had the pleasure of speaking with uh, Mr. Jacob Wall. Um, thank you so much, and once again, how can people contact you and Montgomery and, uh, and also catch you on Twitter? Yeah, if people want to contact us and learn more about my fund, uh, they can visit MontgomeryAssets.com. Alternatively, they can visit Beverly Hills Investing. Dot com. They okay. both go to the same site. Uh, they can also follow me on Twitter at Jacob A. Wohl. Last name W O H L. I'm sure you can link it yep. uh, in the description. We'll do. Uh, and they can reach out, and I'm uh, available, and we can talk uh, numbers. That sounds great. Uh, Mr. Jacob Wohl has joined us today. Um, I'm going to go uh, check out that video you mentioned, and I'm also going to check out some tobacco stocks, I think. <laughs> Cause I'm, great, great. I'm, I'm feeling pretty bullish on that. Thank you so much, Jacob. I really appreciate your time today, sir. Yeah, absolutely. All right.